Hello and welcome everyone. I'm very glad to be here. Um, okay, so detecting um, uh, virtual reality can help empower people with dementia. Dementia, as we know, it is an umbrella term that helps to describe symptoms such as memory decline and uh, difficulty with thinking. As the disease progresses, memory function starts to decline. Um, everyday life task becomes difficult to a point where individuals are no longer able to function independently, for example, performing simple everyday life tasks. It is a disease that affects all of us here globally, and it is one of the main cause of disability later in the life ahead of cancer, cardiovascular disease, and stroke. Um, currently in UK, almost one million of people are living with dementia, and this number will grow in the next couple of years. In 2051, it is expected that almost two million of people will uh, be diagnosed with dementia. One in six of us will have dementia over the age of 80. The cause of dementia are going to, ex are expected to more than double in the next 25 years, from 26 to 55 billions of pounds in 2040. This is a really big problem for everyone of us, and we have to start come up with some solutions to help those people to um, make them more independent so they can live in more independently and improve their quality of life. Um, another thing is that currently there is no cure or treatment that can help those people, which is very sad. And uh, the only um, thing that uh, is available currently is basic medical uh, medication that can slow down the progression of the symptoms. Um, what me and my team, Detecting Alzheimer and Enhancing Memory, team from Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh, are trying to do is to come up with some assessments to uh, help to uh, rehabilitate the lost cognitive function in people who are cognitively impaired. So, our team has developed virtual reality assessment and intervention system tool that helps us to assess people's cognitive abilities as they perform everyday life tasks in real uh, life settings. I began uh, working uh, with the team recently where I start to assess uh, participants, healthy uh, young and older adults, their um, performance on everyday life tasks. I have been also interested to see if such a lack of familiarity on everyday life task, like making a cup of tea, would uh, pose any difficulties. As we know from uh, current observation that lack of familiarity when performing everyday life tasks uh, for healthy young adults, um, it is, um, resembles the kind of struggles that people with uh, cognitive um, ab abilities where their cognitive abilities starts to decline. So it resembles the kind of struggles they are faced in everyday life. I would like to take you on a mission uh, on the uh, project that I have been lately working on where I developed a task um, called Unfamiliar Kitchen Task, to which I also refer to as an alien task. It is a kind of a task that manipulates uh, familiar everyday life tasks um, that becomes unfamiliar, difficult for 
older participants whose cognitive memories and abilities are declining. To uh, assess healthy young adults' performance on kitchen tasks, our team has developed a kitchen lab in one of the psychology departments uh, on Harriet Watt University Edinburgh campus. We use recyclable materials to create uh, and develop kitchen lab where we assess healthy young adults' performance. This kitchen lab, uh, we use specifically a kitchen lab because we know from previous series that it is the best setting that provides best um, environment to test healthy and older people's, uh, young and older people's abilities on everyday life tasks. We called our kitchen the kitchen lab because as you see, it represents the kind of the kitchen we would be most likely to find in our home. In the kitchen lab, we tested healthy young adults on a performance of everyday life uh, as they perform simple everyday life tasks such as making a tea. Um, also, um, in this kitchen, we ask participants to perform one of two kitchen tasks. The, it was either familiar kitchen task or unfamiliar kitchen task. Familiar kitchen task, as you can see, it required participants to perform the kind of activities we would perform in everyday life in our kitchen. Those activities would be performed relatively automatically uh, because we would know to make a tea what kind of items we have to use. Uh, the location and how they look like. Therefore, it would be very familiar for us how to make this task. However, let's imagine if we landed on Mars and we have to make a cup of tea using the available um, products, resources on Mars. We would have to learn step by step how to make a tea. Therefore, we would have to form new representations of what aliens would call a cup and how the uh, kettle would look like. This unfamiliar kitchen task that I developed uh, manipulates the kind of um, manipulates the familiar kitchen task in the way that it shows how uh, healthy young adults perform and the struggles they perform represents um, the kind of struggles that older healthy participants with dementia would perform as they perform familiar kitchen tasks on a day-to-day basis. The way our um, experiment uh, started was that, first of all, we invited healthy young uh, students, participants, where we tested their abilities, mental abilities, for example, on performance, um, also, as you can see, on problem solving, how good they are at the problem solving, and as they were successful on those mental abilities, we then asked them to perform um, a practice trial so they get to familiarize themselves with the kitchen, the environment, and the task. After they felt they are ready to perform the actual kitchen task, we asked them to memorize either familiar or unfamiliar kitchen task for which they could spend as long as they wish uh, to memorize until they felt ready to perform those kitchen tasks. Uh, when they felt ready to perform the kitchen task, they were asked by experimenter to perform those kitchen tasks in exactly the same order and using exactly the same items as it was instructed in the instruction. Um, also, um, as they were performing uh, those kitchen tasks, they experienced five different interferences. 
to which they had to respond as initially indicated on the instructions they had to memorize. For example, if they heard a sound of dog barking, they had to touch a kettle. This would be the kind of similar interferences we would uh, come across as we would be performing everyday life tasks in um, our home or anywhere else. For example, an elderly person would um, turn on the gas cooker place the frying pan, and then suddenly a phone would call. The elderly person may have forgot that the frying pan may be burning by now. Therefore, it, uh, this interference represents what could happen in everyday life tasks. As participants were performing those kitchen tasks, um, an experimenter would be sitting in the corner of the lab in the same uh, lab as the participants would be performing the kitchen task and observing carefully how they perform the kitchen task and making a note whether they um, miss any actions, what items do they use to perform those actions. Um, I was also interested to see what exactly goes on in the brain of those people as they perform unfamiliar kitchen tasks. Therefore, to get this data, I ask participants to wear a portable EEG called BioRadio, which collected um, their brain activity uh, from four different uh, regions of the brain, from frontal, parietal, uh, central and occipital, uh, which allowed us to see how the brain is um, in action as they perform unfamiliar kitchen tasks. The results shown to be very rewarding and we were very happy to see that our hypothesis confirms that um, as we would here all expect, performing tasks that are more challenging, therefore more unfamiliar, comparing to familiar kitchen tasks, um, poses more uh, difficulties to healthy young adults, which shows that performing unfamiliar kitchen tasks resembles the kind of struggles that people with dementia would perform as they perform familiar kitchen tasks as their cognitive abilities are slowly declining, the association between the items and the, the functions is slowly decreased, and what used to be familiar, like it is still familiar for us, no longer becomes familiar. It becomes challenging, and also to a point when it is alien as they can no longer perform the familiar task. So, we found that performing unfamiliar kitchen tasks for healthy young adults led to significantly more errors. For example, those healthy participants forgot to perform many more um, activities that were instructed. This we called misses. They also chose wrong items to perform those activities. Uh, for example, when we ask them to, perf to take a tea, they would tend to take a coffee or hot chocolate. This we refer to as semantic errors. Another error they performed is when we specifically ask them to take black Yorkshire tea, as you saw on slides before, they would tend to take a green tea or a lemon tea, to which we refer as episodic errors. What's more, because they forgot significantly more actions, they came up with new actions that were not instructed them to perform at all, yet they still performed them. This we called intrusion errors. And it gets even more excited when we uh, analyze the biological data from uh, participants performing unfamiliar kitchen tasks, the brain activity. We've seen that in order to perform unfamiliar kitchen tasks, participants required 
a significant amount of the brain activity in order to deal with those um, difficult, uh, challenging kitchen tasks. Also, they used um, specific areas of, of the brain to perform those activities. As we can uh, see that specific parts of the brain were more active than the others. For example, our frontal uh, area of the brain was more active than occipital area of the brain to uh, perform those kitchen tasks. Um, having this uh, really great findings and interesting findings, we started to think whether uh, we can use modern and evolving technologies um, perhaps to transfer our real life kitchen lab into virtual reality where we can further um, test participants' abilities on both familiar and unfamiliar kitchen tasks uh, to see um, whether uh, we can rehabilitate and restore the lost cognitive functions that uh, people with dementia are faced with. Having seen that our framework that we developed is, is um, good enough and sensitive to detect the cognitive decline, we teamed up with computer scientists that helped us to develop and transfer our kitchen lab from um, real life setting into virtual reality where we already started to test healthy young adults on familiar and unfamiliar kitchen tasks. What's more, we already tested uh, healthy older adults on familiar kitchen tasks in virtual reality. We are currently uh, starting on recruiting healthy older adults and um, e exploring how they would perform on unfamiliar kitchen tasks and also learning more about what goes on in their brain, what's their brain activity like when they perform um, unfamiliar kitchen tasks in virtual reality, which could help to unveil new findings, uh, whether healthy older adults rely on the same um, brain areas, um, as they perform unfamiliar tasks, comparing to healthy older adults. And also we would learn what goes on in the brain as people are aging. Um, to sum up, um, our main goal is to create, a virtu using virtual reality, create a tool that would help to rehabilitate and restore cognitive abilities to people that are cognitively impaired, for example, people with dementia, and would empower those people's quality of life. Also make them more um, independent where they can perform uh, those familiar tasks as they used to be able to perform them. Um, so this is where our team is heading currently to, is to come up with an assessment um, with a program, a tool using virtual reality in order to help to restore the lost cognitive abilities to people with dementia. Thank you.